Okay, call us a meeting of the Ellsworth Planning Commission to order. Uh, Judy, would you like to take the roll, please? Yes. Reed? Here. Sims? Here. Stiles? Here. Ibrahim? Here. Also present are uh, Village Planner Denise Swinger. Um, here from Coolidge Wall is Jessica uh, is Brockman. Brockman. Brockman, I'm so sorry. Um, and uh, Rose Pilzel and Chris Rubin will not be here this evening. Thank you. Okay, so we have an agenda in front of us. Uh, is there any additions, deletions? Are we going to rearrange anything? If not, uh, we have two sets of minutes in now, our packets. I am told by um, <laughs> Kula 12 folks that you can move to adopt the minutes rather than approve the minutes if you if a quorum of those who had been present for the minutes are not here. And, and we might want to look at doing that just because we've got two right. sets wrapped up here. So anyone can move to adopt? You can actually vote, you can vote yes on a move to adopt even if you were not present, if you have read them. Okay. okay. Thanks for that. The uh, first uh, seven minutes is from September 12th, 2016. This uh, almost means I was not here, but I did read them and I felt like I was there. Judy, you're so confident. <laughs> <laughs> I move to adapt the minutes. I second. Um, September. Okay. Any uh, anybody have any edits, comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. October 10th uh, is the next set. That is the uh, last month. Um, I think, uh, actually, Jerry, you were here, right? Yeah, yeah. And myself and, and Susan. So, uh, Any changes on these, uh, these comments? Page one, page two. Communications. I don't know that we have any. Uh, following communications council report. Do you have anything relevant to this? Uh, no, not this I don't think. Do you remember anything that was relevant? You've got a few zoning code um, ordinances that are running through the things, the text amendments that you had approved are now up for um, council action. So they, they received a first approval, so the second reading and um, passage should take place on the 21st. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Matt, I attended the, um, and I'm not sure where this should go in, oh, I attended yeah. that climate planning and had just a couple comments. Sure. So, Mr. <clears throat> okay. Um, one of the things that they were suggesting is, uh, or that came up in the group, because they were all suggestions, is that we increase residential density and liberalize, liberalize dwelling accessory units, uh, mandate new buildings to be more energy efficient, um, zoning, which I guess wouldn't necessarily affect us, to permit group living, and Again, new buildings being more energy efficient. What was the second one? Increased density? Oh, like uh, encourage accessory levels? Yes. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. would be big strides. I, mean, I don't know if we're at the end of that at this point as a village, but our new code is definitely going in that direction. Did they have any kind of, any 
any kind of uh, numbers or any kind of things no, like they, that? No, they, they didn't, uh, because it was more of a, where people were making comments and they were listing them all. So we weren't coming up with um, any specifics. Yeah. You know, they may at a later point have another meeting where there would be more of that, but this one was, um, Just coming up with the ideas. How was that? Was it, was it interesting? <coughs> it was interesting. Yeah, I told you not way too late. Yeah, it, it was actually different than what I had expected, and you know, very interesting. Good. Okay, so you're the new accessory quality expert. Oh, oh wait, you must have Okay, so uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, thanks for that, Susan. The uh, next. Item is public hearing on the revision of definitions regarding um, the length of time a form unit can be rented or leased. Uh, Denise, do you want yeah. to start well, this discussion? Yeah, we discussed the Airbnb uh, idea concept that's been, uh, we're seeing those coming up here in Yellow Springs for the last couple of meetings. And um, I think at the very minimal, the one thing that we could do to ensure that, that at least um, we know where they're <coughs> at and that they come before uh, the planning commission to just say what they're planning on doing and, and, and understanding that you know there is that conditional use process is to include that word daily so that it will encompass all of those. That's the very <coughs> minimal thing to do um, that uh, staff is recommending. Um, now, I did not notice anything additional to that. So if there are other things that that planning commission members feel should go into the short-term rental section in the, under conditional use because there isn't much there, then that would have to be um, cited at a later meeting. The only thing that I had a concern about is that you have ones already operating. And I would like to be assured that any of them out there operating, that they would have to come and um, make um, us aware, the village aware, that they're operating. Um, because it, because this is, uh, I've had some discussions with different people, and people want to know if there's one in their neighborhood. Uh, it, it, it impacts, you know, if you have a whole bunch in your neighborhood or if you have a few. It also impacts um, affordable housing. Because some people are using uh, perhaps an accessory structure that could actually be rented on a monthly, yearly, you know, a annual basis, but they're using it as an Airbnb, thinking they can make more money, and maybe they do make more money. But you know, I think it's something that we want to have an awareness of how many there are in the community. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I, I, mean, I, I like the idea of you know, just so we know who is doing it now and who's going to be doing it going forward. Um, I, I was at a conference recently. Um, there was a session on Airbnb and addressing Airbnb and, and long-term rentals. Um, places like Boulder, Colorado, are seeing uh, no available long-term rentals for people who want to actually live in the area because everyone there is, you know, same dollar signs and do the Airbnb thing. Um, and it's happening in a lot of big cities. Uh, and um, I, don't know, I, I just think that it isn't happening here yet, so there's no reason to like you know jump the gun. But as long as we know, we can keep tabs of where it's going. If it turns out there's 200 of them operating Yellow Springs, maybe at that point there's some regulation. That you, as you know, there, there's a few that are operating now. You know, and I might approach them and just say, look, you know, we'll waive the fee. We just want you to come and go through the process. Right. You know, um, it's not saying. You know, I think people get frightened when they when they think of the conditional use process as, as saying that, you know, it's a complete ban, right. and usually it's just, a, you know, it's just a, it's a permitted use, but we're going to put conditions on it, and, it, and I had someone just the other day call asking um, about uh, having an Airbnb, and it was interesting because I, I felt we were going to head this direction, and they said they heard that we were going to be making it a conditional use. I said, short-term rentals already are. I said, well, there's just, in our language, we just need to tighten up daily versus weekly. That's it. But you already have to come before planning fish. And they were, they were a little frightened by, well, uh, do the neighbors, you know, have a say? And I said, well, yes, they do. And, and, but, but it's a compromising situation. You know, if, 
if, uh, if the neighbors fear uh, that people are be parking all over the place, then you know, planning commission will say, you know, there can only be, you know, this amount of cars off street, and that's it, you know, and they'll have to find some place else to park or whatever. And you can set like rules on Airbnb, so you can say quiet neighborhood, you know, park in the driveway. Well, I mean, as a conditional use, we can say. Yes, right. we, we can say what those are, and they they right. then you know without the customer through their website, which is you know. So I mean, I don't think it would cause anyone any like you know stress having to you know follow anything like this. I don't, I don't think so either. And I mean, it, it seems like in the, before the short term rentals, there really wasn't much um, uh, to say about it. I guess you know where where when you say accessory dwelling unit. But of course, those people are living there all the time. You had all these little requirements, um, not so with short-term rentals. So, um, and we can maybe just keep it simple like that. That's fine. Jessica did a little bit of investigating as well, and I don't know, Jessica, if you want to mention about the fact that you can't deny them either. No, no, you can't deny them. I mean, I, I saw what you said about Boulder, Colorado. I think New York City is having that same issue. So there. They actually put in some regulations where they're going to try to get money from um, Airbnb if the uh, people aren't following the rules. In San Francisco, too. In San Francisco, I think, it, and there was another place in California. I mean, so Airbnb is suing a lot of different cities right now. So we wouldn't want us to say we, no. we can't have them. Yeah, Airbnb is suing. So I mean, they've sued at yeah. least four or five recently. So does does the community have a right to say, like, in a neighborhood? That, you, that if you have, you know, like maybe, let's say 10 houses in the neighborhood, and if there are six houses that are doing Airbnbs, can you say that, you know, we don't want any more, or, or no? I didn't look at that. I mean, I, I feel like you should, you can regulate it in that way. I just don't think you can have a blanket. To say that you can't be in it. Yeah, you can't be in it. Well, that's not what we're contemplating, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it. I, I like this as it stands. I think that, you know, putting it on the radar at least, you know, mm -hmm. is, is, is the right step. But, well, I have a well. question, though, and it pertains to what you just said and, and then Jessica's comment. Would the Planning Commission need to have something on the books stating that there was, you know, that a, more than a certain number in a given neighborhood would not be permitted? I'm just wondering if. Planning Commission is sitting and hearing their 10th request, and they realize, gee, you know, this is getting, now are they putting themselves at risk for, for a lawsuit right. when you might with a, with a sexually oriented business if you suddenly said, whoa, too many, if you hadn't pre previously right. regulated that number? <clears throat> I mean, is that something that needs to happen? I'm wondering. So you're saying maybe we need to spell out the conditions that we would evaluate <coughs> as part of the application for conditional use? Maybe just that piece that said, you know, you, you contemplate the impact on the neighborhood the kind of deal, and right. maybe that's more specif specific to um, the number of Airbnbs in any given neighborhood is greater than some, I don't know. And maybe with the other residents. I mean, perhaps if the other residents in the neighborhood don't care, then right. maybe it's okay then to have you know, every every house. I think you know, I would I would think that if if you take comments and if you listen to them and if there were people that were complaining didn't want it, then and if we would use that to make a decision, then it would also be that if you have no complaints and nobody interested in see, but this, what's interesting to that of to me about this body is that you do weigh those neighbor issues but neighborhoods change continually. Yeah. And if you right. lock up a neighborhood with Airbnbs, it becomes a different kind of entity. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the same way that you sort of say, you can have this many bars, but once we get more than that number of bars, we've created a different kind of district. Mm -hmm. if, and if you had that same approach with Airbnb, for example, then you're not left with each case going, God, is it too many? They don't seem to care, but what if? And it just seems to me it might make it easier for you once you have moved down the road a year or two. Right, is that a number now? Um, can we, can we, is there any way to do some further research and see what other places are doing and come back and talk about this? Well, I think, and actually, I think Denise brought this up, was, is that if we make change to this short term rental language, right. then we'll need to have a separate hearing anyway. Right, okay. Just because this, this hasn't been advertised. The, the only thing that was advertised was the. Um, the, the, the 
definition. The, the definition, right. yes. <clears throat> I mean, we can come back and and go further with it. Um, <clears throat> I can send an email out to the people who did the presentation and just see, you know, if they made solutions or. It sounds like we're kind of in agreement that maybe there should be some spelled out evaluation points that will be taken into consideration mm -hmm. by planning commission. Yeah. Whether it's density of short term rentals, uh, parking. parking, concerns of the neighbors. The noise, I was thinking noise trash, you know, removal. Um, you know, you don't want someone who's a short term, you want to make sure that the property owner is going to be responsible for, you know, cleaning up after people yeah. leave so that stuff isn't just laying around for a week. So would that be a change in these, this section of short term rentals, probably? Um, that's what I'm wondering, yes. That's because this is already that. in the conditional use section, right? Correct. Yes. Is it, yeah, what, what is it about parking for short term rentals? I, I imagine parking should be different. I would imagine too. I mean, people like the like the vacation kind of homes thing. So you, you groups of people are meeting up and going to one of these houses. You know, instead of one car for a tiny house, maybe three or four of them. You know, maybe we should think about that as well. Right. There isn't. I don't think there is. There was nothing. All you have for is just, like, is just the talks just, about the permitting, the location, right. and the max, maximum occupancy. Yeah, if that was, the maximum occupancy was what five. Um, it, added, it followed health department requirements. Okay. So, uh, which we kind of figured, I think it was over. If it was over, it becomes a boarding house or something. But I mean, the, the, because that really doesn't, a, I mean. That actually seems important <coughs> to have the Airbnb be aware of because sometimes you'll have two families maybe coming and renting and that they each may have children. So they could exceed the, the number, particularly some of them that I've seen advertised that maybe have two bedrooms or things like that, and you might have right. Maybe six or eight people. Yes. Yeah, I, I use like meeting a lot. I'm always meeting friends, and like there's always a lot more people than you know would normally be in that house. I mean, it's, when, usually the houses say they can hold six or can hold seven, but I mean, what the houses can hold and what the parking can facilitate is two different things. Sometimes, obviously, um, just something to be aware of in, the, in our next discussion. So I guess, um, so I'm suggesting that we go ahead and at least uh, for now, uh, <clears throat> enables me to let people know that we are regulating it yeah. completely by, by ch adding that one word. Yeah, I think we proceed with the public hearing off with respect to the definition. Yes, and then um, I can do more research, come back at a later time and, and I think the maximum number of occupants is dependent on the how old the size of the house. Yeah. Okay. So do you have enough information from us to do some research on additional language on the short term model? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Denise on the change in the definition? If not I guess you know when we to talk about research and so forth, you know, comparing Yellow Springs to these large, you know, <laughs> large, large areas. It, those large, large areas, cities or whatever, have a lot more options, and we, and we are very space limited. So just because they like it in Portland, there, there are more available uh, places, some types of places for people to, to, to live or stay. We don't have that. We're two mile radius, and and you know we talk about density, but you know you you get get to a point where you're now weighing density versus safety and. And other issues. And uh, it, was, it was years ago, and I forget the street, uh, where we had the issue of putting the uh, fire vehicles get down and turn around. And we got smaller vehicles now, but I know that when we're looking at getting a bigger vehicle, the aerial ladder and so forth, because we have 
less firefighters, so we, we're looking at units that will do more with less. And then try to get those, these units into the area. So I, you know, I think density is one thing, but again, we have to take into consideration the space that we have, uh, have available. Because of what I see in, in terms of, uh, of uh, accessory dwellings, you know, where you know, I got a browse down the bottom and then now I have to come in, you know, and, you know, and, you know, I look at And the accessory dwelling says it can only be two adults and one, yes. and, and it adds one extra parking space. Um, so that definitely has, you can't just do anything. Yeah, okay. Yeah, unless someone else, you know, we get more language in here and someone actually comes in, you really don't know what's, you know, how many people are where and when. <laughs> if, if I'm, because I know I drive around and one time I see one car and there's, there's a certain place and the next time I see five or six. And I'm just, you know, what is it? <laughs> you know, I said, you know, they, they can't be having that many guests every day. <laughs> you know, so. But I just bring that up so we, we use that as part of the discussion because we're, we have a tendency to say, well, that they, they do it in Portland and they do it in, in this place and it's not, it's not in this place. So you're really, right. you're and see, really comparing and, apples and And this kind of came about because we found it is in the Yellow Springs and we were not really paying attention yeah, to it, you know. Right. So, um, so Denise, I have a question. Since an accessory dwelling say a maximum of two adults, what if somebody is using their accessory dwelling as an Airbnb? Does that regulation still stand that no more than two adults? I don't, you know, I, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, the accessory dwelling, but the accessory dwelling has to do with someone who's living there all the time for like, you know, a six months to a year long lease. I just don't know the answer to that. Um, so, because we have under the short term rentals, which we're going to include, I guess, the Airbnb there, it just says, you know, the health department requirements. So that would be, even if it's an accessory dwelling that's being used. So... Even if it's being used as a short-term rental. Yes. It, yeah, I don't know who, uh, what the health department's requirements would be. I think that, I think it's based on square footage of bedrooms and number of bath bathroom facilities and things like that is down to people can occupy. Have to check on that. That's a good question. Um, okay. So that'd be good to know that number. Yeah. And that might be a good idea to uh, include in our. Additional approvals of accessory dwellings. This, this does not mean you know, this is a short term loan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. All right. Using right. this as a short term loan, you'd come back for that. Yeah. yeah. That should be a standard mm -hmm. clause. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we should be blocking this. And any step of the way, but I think that you know we should be involved as much as as much as possible, you know, so we keep control of the situation. I guess people know, right? right. I mean, that's and unless you know, if we have if we have an idea, we can also let the police department know who's here. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Any more comments for Denise on this uh, change in the definition of the short-term rental? Okay, if they're not, if it's not, then we'll open the public hearing. If anyone here has any comments or questions about this change in the definition of short-term rental units, um, come forward and speak into the microphone, identify yourself. Um, if not, 
Um, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, any further discussion on this change in the definition? Uh, do I have a motion then to accept this? So, Senator. Judy, I'd like to call the roll, please. So you are moving to revise Chapter 1284, Section 1284.08 definitions. Um, Short-term rental unit for the underlying terms in Denise's write-up. Okay. That is submitted by staff. Oh. Oops, sorry. There was one other thing that, that was on that besides daily. You didn't specify yes. yeah. a room in it. A lot of the, a lot of the um, Airbnbs are people that are renting out a room, but they're still living there. Right. right. And this, this, this definition only talks about a dwelling unit as a whole. So I forgot I, had, I suggested that. Or a room in a dwelling unit. Yeah. We understood that, right? Did you? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was one of the two changes. I didn't know. Okay. So we're going to go with as right. recommended by staff, which you're going to um, just talk to me about tomorrow when yeah, it I is. Yeah, I am. All right, then. Um, Abraham. Yes. Sims. Yes. Styles. Yes. Reed. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> On to old business. Uh, old business pocket neighborhood ordinance continued discussion. At the last meeting, we um, we almost didn't even talk about pocket neighborhoods. We, we just pushed through for about 15 minutes and keep it keep the conversation going. Um, but uh, as a result of uh, a couple of um, projects that have come forth recently, and um, also trying to look at where we could fit a pocket neighborhood into the code, whether it's uh, Considering what Grove City did with having a HUD R residential for pocket neighborhoods, um, it became uh, clear that there were just some issues with the density as it stands right now um, in residential areas. For, um, specifically in relationship to a couple of um, projects that are going to be seen by the Board of Zoning Appeals um, I, and after meeting with the um, uh, chair of the Board of Zoning Appeals his interpretation uh, of by the way it's described was different than my interpretation mm -hmm. by the way it was described and for example if you go to uh, lot and width requirements is on the, that is page three. the back side of page two, yeah, back side of page two. Um, specifically, if like if you're in like for example RC, uh, it talks about two family dwellings shall provide four thousand square feet per unit. Attached single family and multifamily dwellings are permitted a density up to fourteen units per acre. His interpretation of that was um, if you meet all the setback requirements, you meet parking requirements, you can have a density up to 14 units per acre. So they didn't really see any restrictions on that um, in, in particular. I was taking it literally and, and dividing, well, a quarter means 3.5. Would, units would be allowed if it's less than, than a quarter of an acre then then it would only be 3.2 or you know I was trying to calculate it that way so here were two different people the chair of the BZA and then myself as a staff member completely interpreting that density in two different ways um, so what you did you just took the acre and divided it by the middle <coughs> south, south, uh, lot area is that well, <coughs> meaning, okay, what, what, there well, see, it says up to so many uh, units per acre, right. but there's only one lot. So when, oh, when you're saying, when I was doing, I was saying, well, let, I just to round it off, let's say it's a quarter of an acre lot. Right. I was thinking, well, then the maximum would be 3.5. Right. 
I mean, that, and, that is, that is kind of what it says. And what it, was his interpretation? His interpretation was you'd have up to 14 units per acre, it, it, and anything less than that. It, as long as it fits the setbacks. As sure. long as you, the, the, set, the setbacks, um, it, you know. It, so it, he was saying for a quarter of an acre, you could fit any number you wanted as long as you met the setbacks. As long as you met the parking requirements, which would be very difficult to do on a quarter of an acre. For anything, right, and that does more. make sense once you start getting to like it it's 200 acres, then you don't have more than 14 units per acre. I understand that's that does kind of make sense. Um, and it says up to right up to 14, so that's why the limit's there for if you go. So, let's say someone was building a huge development, you couldn't have you know, 15 per acre, so, but it doesn't talk about. But see, if you look at if, but, but if you look at for example, if that would have been an RB, then RB's requirement is. Um, 40 is attached, shall provide 4,500 square feet per unit of lot acreage. So that would mean that you could only put two on right. that lot. Yeah. And can, can, can we, is there any way we can clear that up in the language so that in the future you don't have issues around reading that two different ways? Well, see, I, they took a they took a minimum housing requirements out of the code, right, right. and at the time that they did that, the question came up: Well, is that how is that going to affect the density? And the person who had been writing the code was no longer there, and it became a person from Green County Regional uh, that said, "Well, it should be guided by." between the density, it should be okay. Yeah. Well, because you also have a minimum, maximum lot coverage in terms of percentage. Right. Yeah. Which is kind of a little bit. It seems it's 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 redundant. So if your units are smaller, then you could have more. <coughs> that's the, that's the thing. Exceed the percentage of coverage. Yeah, right. So if, you're not, if, if you're, if you're meeting coverage. everything else, if you're meeting the lot coverage for that area, you're meeting the parking requirements, you're meeting the setbacks. What's the, what's and I wouldn't issue? say an issue because yeah. I think we we are I guess I see we're trying to encourage uh, higher density. <coughs> and so as long as it you know meets all the other things, I wouldn't see an issue. I, I, has this been one of our tab does that know this did we recently need to do the pocket I mean what what does the pocket neighborhoods offer that this isn't that this would um, that this doesn't. Well, it's just that um, in some ways you almost have it here. Right. Do you yes, know yes, what yes, I mean? Yes, right. It's yes. like, in, in, <coughs> and you know, I'm thinking about adding all this code stuff yeah, here. It's like, stuff well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Like, um, so without the minimum building size, it, it, I don't see it's an issue. I mean, you should be able to develop a pocket neighborhood under this definition. Can, can, can well, we make it clear? Can we just okay. agree on that? Is it, is it an issue, though? Because one of the things that the pocket neighborhood allows you to do, that all of your units don't have to be facing the street, that, so right. that you can do them around an area. And the pocket neighborhood would require that there be some sort of community area, whether it's a little building, or whether it's a garden, or whether it's whatever. Where this doesn't do it's that, kind of it seems well, like right. the pocket neighborhoods sort of standardize certain things so that you're not creating them new each time, and that you had sort of a sense that you know it's not that you want all the houses to look alike or anything like that, but just that you want certain elements there. And, and Jessica said the 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 PUD enables you to have some control right. over mm -hmm. how it's going to look. Where, where you think yeah. the pocket neighborhood but, went. But that, that, that process well, is I so mean, difficult. If, you put, if we had the, <coughs> so I think what I'm saying is, if, <coughs> I want to be able to have developers be able to start a process with some idea <coughs> that they're going to be able to do this. And that was the other thing that Ted had said. Without it, without going to all of this expense to know that it is something that we, we at least uh, would, look at would look at. But, um, but <coughs> you know, I think the PUD 
might be the better place to go. It's not like we have a lot of land yeah. in our future. Oh, that's true. Well, there's some areas, though. I mean, there's some, there are some areas chunks that of are property there. still. In I think Ted Denell was encouraging us to do it because he felt that from the development standpoint, uh, particularly if you're trying to do increase the density and you're trying to increase affordability, then you need to be able to know that yes, you probably are going to be able to do this, or else you wouldn't want to put on put all the money in to do, be doing the site plan. Yeah, site plan, engineering, whatever. Yeah, where's the what chapters that PUD? It's I think it's right. <coughs> see, I can I can see an argument for yeah. density, but. But affordability, uh, to me, there's no guarantee that once it's built, everybody's going to be able to afford it. And, you know, yeah. it, it, to me, it gives the, the builder to maximize the, the space that he has to, to get as many units as he has to gain the benefit. It doesn't mean that they're going to be affordable. Right. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, it might no. mean that the less because it, less because it could be very even. expensive. Right. It could be less dense. Yeah. You might have just natural areas. Absolutely. Or, um, <coughs> but see, I, so I can see both of the I, I can see both of the, the arguments in 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 the calculation. Yeah. But we, we have inclusionary housing incentives in the PUD process, right? Isn't that one of the I mean, yeah? There's density bonus. Yeah, density bonus. Right. But, but just looking at you know the, the example that Denise is talking about and the interpretation, of it, which is really what it boils down to, uh, is you know, meeting the other. You get 14 or doing the calculation by quarter acre. You know, and one could argue, you know, since you came up, Denise, with 3.5. Well, that was that was how I was. Figuring right. it, but that's not how he interpreted it. But what I'm saying is, one could argue that when you rock, since it's 3.5, not 3.4, 3.6, we can go up and we can go down. Right. <coughs> you found it? So, yeah. And then, so, and looking at it, if it meets all the requirements, right. the setbacks in that, right. and then you would go for the higher number, but it, and it would be based on the size of the units, because, you know, if they were large units, Maybe but see, we don't have any minimums anymore, right. so that's why mm -hmm. why you can put more. And mm -hmm. but you know, just because um, it doesn't mean that that the project wouldn't still have use the same footprint, and they might only have two or three units. But if they can get four um, and meet all those other requirements, it just it just really. Uh, held me up in the way this was the way this was described. I, don't, I just don't, I, it just wasn't um, looked at, I think, it, again, after, let's see, because the council made that change after the technical review committee had put that all together and probably calculated those density based on the minimum sizes of the prop house and right. units. And then when those were taken out, this, I think they just thought, well, that will guide it. Well, it, it, it doesn't. Uh, it does you mean, uh, are you saying if, from a planning perspective, commission, you know, if we said uh, uh, permits a density up to 14 units per acre in meeting other setback requirements. If, if we said that specifically, it would be on the list for that. It would be easy to. I don't think it would be an issue. Yeah, so it's. it's but that, and then that's only for RC. You know, in RB, right. it's, RB it's, 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 it's up to eight. Mm -hmm. Right. But does it have to be the same in each one? But I think the only, the only thing is, is you have to take into consideration the properties around you, though. Like the one that one that we're looking at right now happens to be on a quarter lot on Dayton Street. You know, it's not it's not going to be um, it's not going to be stuck in the middle of a neighborhood. Well, RB is, is still 
14 years correct. That was an error in the code. Was that, um, shoot, I'm surprised they had caught that. We changed that. Was it it's not eight. Oh, well, that's eight. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's right. And RA is six units. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I you know, I, I wouldn't want to see something happen um, uh, in the smack dab in the middle of the neighborhood, though. That was houses, 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 and then all of a sudden, maybe something all crammed in together. I, I, I don't know. But at the same time, as so long as they meet the setback requirements, I mean, they would not. I mean, so yeah. if they meet the setbacks, then. They're not needing to come to planning? Uh, the only condition, um, well, the, in, in, the, it's, in this case, both right now, because the way that this language is, they have to go to the BCA. But they don't have to, because it's less than 5,000 square feet, um, they don't have to, they go for a level A review, which is something that they just will go. Once BCA, BCA approves it, then they'll come back and do the permit for the level A review, and then I'd issue that. Why do they have to go to BCA at all? Well, because the interpretation is, well, they, and they're still asking for a park. It's kind of confusing, but there's a parking allowance of, um, it, it requires two parking spaces per unit. They are doing senior housing, so it's 1.25, which means five, spaces. They're putting uh, four spaces on the one street because it's a corner lot. Um, <coughs> we are suggesting that they show the other space along with three other spaces if it would ever convert back as future because that is on Dayton Street and um, it's my understanding that the code was changed to allow RC further down Dayton Street to encourage parking on the street because it's such a wide street. So basically, we're getting a variance for that as well, just to make sure that even though we're showing the future, we're not going to make them go ahead and put a curb cut in and add that to the parking space just for the sake of adding it, if it's not needed. That would be a condition that if later on it becomes a, a problem, then they would have to go back and add that. But then again, the interpretation, I mean, I didn't interpret it that way when I read it. I, I interpreted it from if it's 14 units per acre, and if it was a quarter acre, that meant 3.5. And that's not how uh, the chair felt. I mean, he's, he's, he interpreted it differently, but that's his interpretation. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts about that. Is there any way we can just clarify the language to keep that one interpretation? The I, no, because I mean, I've, I've done all my research. I went back and looked at like the minutes of how this all happened. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it just. We can do it now. I mean, we could do it now. Yeah. I think yeah. Oh, you mean. Yeah, no, okay, you so, so, so that next time, yes. 10 years from now, whoever's at the head of the BTA doesn't, can't look at that and say, no, that does mean 3.5. So it's not open to interpretation. So it's very clear that if it's, you know, 14 units per acre if it's over one acre or, or that one acre or more or whatever. I don't know. Whatever they say to you know, make sure that that doesn't, you know, clear it up. I mean, I, I think that's the idea of this, the code in general. So this is not as open to interpretation. It's pretty cut and, cut and dry. I mean, what you're saying, though, is that Ted is saying his interpretation is that they can put 14 units on the acre. They can put 14 units on 0.25 acres. Up to what? On 0.25 acres. Yeah. He's no, he's he he's saying, uh, yeah. I mean, if you had a half an acre and you could get 14 units on it, you could do it. Also, you because it's based on, as long as you meet the other requirements. As long as you meet the setback and yeah. the percent maximum lot cover. Right. The lot, lot coverage and the parking. And the parking. Right. See, in this particular case, this particular one that's coming forward. It's going to be senior housing, so they have a little so bit of years. they have a break on parking. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't. Work. It, well, I mean, it would, it's still, it would still work. I mean, it, but it wouldn't. You couldn't do any more than that. I mean, 
that. I'm not sure I agree with Fed's interpretation, but I think that that was council's intent when they got rid of the maximum or the minimum building size. I think that's exactly what they were thinking about. I mean, it would make sense because those other things are still there to protect it from building like, you know, a tenant, you know. Yeah. But so why then do we have this? Because I had someone at one point that wanted to build uh, a second uh, well you wouldn't be able to do you would not have been able to do two single family homes which is what he's wanting to do so that counted them out anyway. But 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 this one's not accessory structure. Uh, Based on the size, right? And and the, and then if but I said even if he wanted to do a two-family, where he took the existing house and then he made a second one attached to it as a two-family unit, he still he didn't have nine thousand square feet, and so he just kind of gave up on that idea. But um, I mean, are you saying that we should not even have those? Uh, 4,000 or 4,500 square feet then, because that seems kind of... It's confusing it having that, yeah, I think. I think that... It's countered the limiting the minimum. I agree. Yeah, I would scrub that and then clarify the second one. If it's less than, you know, an acre. Well, then, it, then it's that they can put as many units as, so that they are able to meet the setbacks and coverage of the space. Yeah, as long as they're below the max lot coverage. Mm -hmm. So that means you could have a pocket neighborhood of tiny holes. And any of the residential. Well, it, but in the, no more than what, six in RA? Six in RA six. and right. eight in RB. Right. So, I mean, is that going to affect the, I mean? No, that's different than size, I think. Sorry, I mean. That's different than establishing the minimum size. I think that's just looking is clearly looking at density. So that in RA that you have less density. Right. But I'm just trying to think if you have a lot in RA right now and you can put six small homes on six well, that's the thing. You wouldn't be able to put it's not um maybe thirty five percent It's six per acre, isn't it? So you'd have to have at least an acre. Well, I guess if it's less, if you can fit six on. So what if these are single family homes that are not that are not I mean not attached? I mean you can't do you couldn't do that then, right? Because that would be two primary dwellings. There might be something else in the code off the list. We have two primaries. They are. Yeah. Would they be would they be separate houses or would they be attached? I mean, that's so sure. They were all separate. They were yeah, separate. I, I think parking okay. neighborhoods are particularly. So, so. <clears throat> I mean, we're you know we're not uh, we don't have to make any decision now. Uh, because I mean, and advertise it for anything other than the pocket of the discussion. Uh, because, but I just this just came up, and it was like, how am I going to fit something in pocket neighborhood when this isn't even clear? To me? So, but like in RA, it's okay. It would be it's permitted, so they wouldn't necessarily need to come for a permit. Oh yeah. See, in the, the attached single-family dwellings aren't even allowed in RA. Yeah, right. They have to be detached. Mm -hmm. They have to be detached. Okay. 
and it B is single family or two family. Um, it's possible that we could add a pocket neighborhood as a conditional use in certain residential districts or all of them. Instead of doing PUD, we can still. Yeah, isn't that what you're talking yeah. about? Well, we talked about that as an option, but yeah. that doesn't really answer this question. No, but right. that, but. Um, and you're talking about having it as a conditional, so just so that neighbors have the opportunity to comment. Is that what you're, because your concern is if it were an infill lot and you had like single family houses on either side and somebody wanted to do the tiny homes type of thing, that uh, even if, it, if they met all the requirements, that it, for neighbors to comment. Yeah, I think there's something in the have to go back and look in the in the language that, that has it has to fit into the character of the neighborhood yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, that might be the PD. That might be the PD, so I'm not familiar with that process. The pocket neighborhood, the information that you had given us before that the codes, they because I remember some of them were very descriptive of what the houses were supposed to look like. Like each house was to have a porch and that they were supposed to face, you know, like around the, you know, whatever. Right. Um, Shared common area. Yeah, which for those communities was a way that they were then controlling how it was going to look. Um, because in, in reading some of the information you provided, that was the issue in some communities when pocket neighborhoods appeared that the neighbors were concerned about the way that it looked. Did it fit in with their neighborhood? Right. Well, I mean, it's one thing if it's just this raw acreage that hasn't been subplotted out or anything, but, but you know, we do have cases where it's a, it's a lot. It's just a big lot. Yes. Um, so, Just make anything that's like single family attached, or um, uh, right now it's, it has that 5,000 square feet break. But but if it but maybe we shouldn't have that. I mean, maybe they should have to go through a, a, con a conditional use process where it, the planning commission really looks at it and determines if it's going to fit, and, and people can come and. About it. The conditional use is a lot less onerous than the PUD in terms of the times. Mm -hmm. PUD's written. Oh, yeah, you can come here one time. One time, right? Yeah. So, yeah, because the PUD requires a planning meeting, a right. uh, hearing, and then it goes to council. And anywhere along the way, you can get denied. And council has to approve conditional use. No, they don't. It's just one stop. So, so what about? Um, because I've not gone through this process yet. Just in terms of um, the, you have your preliminary review uh, in your site plan. You have the current preliminary, and then you have the final plan. <coughs> this, uh, this is sort of a couple stages, isn't it? When it's for like, conditional use. Uh huh. For a site plan review. A site plan review. Uh, yes, but and I think the first is, review is just with the staff. Okay, and then and then it goes to the okay. No so then it goes to the planning commission. All right. After that, I mean, when when you did the North Park Hotel, there were a lot of meetings, right? No, no. There was with staff, but not. But we had one hearing. Really? Wow. And that was a big building, so. Isn't that right, Judy? Yeah, no, that's correct. Wow. I think it's all should be too with the staff and work with the you know, people beforehand to get as as possible. Mm -hmm. That's of course we're not supposed to be here but picking it apart anyway. Right. Right. Whereas PV is written that it comes before planning right. commission right. before that work session. Yeah. And then a hearing. Yeah. And it's just a lot of work, a lot of money to get something that may yeah. not even ever get done. You know, right. Right. Uh, I, I, that was that was the reason why Ted because when he was here 
the last time he was spoken about it, but he did say that. Yeah. I didn't think about it. He, he did yeah. say he didn't like the PD process yeah. particularly because all that time is destroying his developers from doing it. So yeah. he, I think the conditional use thing would be something that he would be looking you know, more interested in. Well, it's also a month between each of those meetings, too. So uh, there's. And he also thought that it, it um, the different plans that we were looking at, I know I liked the one that was not quite as prescriptive. And he also liked that because he thought for our community, that went with it better. But if you have a conditional use area, you can still yeah, yeah. make changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah make, make conditions. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Sure. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you, when have we used PUD residential? I mean, we used it, we used it for Thistle Creek, right? Was it was used at, for Birch 3, I think. Yeah, Birch 3. Well, yeah. it's not PUD, though, is it? Did you do use it for Little Woods? Little Wood, yeah, definitely Little Wood, and that was quite a long time ago. Well, what was yeah. the last application? Uh, I don't think it's been used. I don't think it's been used since I've been. Um, no, I think that, I think that's exactly right. Yeah, she took it as PD. Yeah. Yeah. Residential. For residential. residential. Yeah. Little Little Wood is a PD. And I, I think, is it Thistle Creek? Thistle yes. Creek's a PD. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thistle Creek is. Wow, so based upon that, we shouldn't put it in PUD. It'll never get used. <laughs> Not if we want people to use it. <laughs> So I, I'm going to come back with just um, some language about <coughs> that takes out these 4,500 square feet per unit and stuff, um, and just keeping that density of 8 and 6, 8, and 14. Okay. Um, and then, Jessica, maybe I can bounce just some thoughts off of you as far as... Just some language for, uh, for, the, for a, additional use. For a conditional use. For a, it'd be basically you're adding it to um, written residential. Residential would affect residential and then. And we'll um, definition. Residential yeah. definition and conditional use. I mean, does this seem like this is the direction? I mean, everybody feels comfortable. I mean, that seems to be in the vision planning process. It was um, more, you know, more dense. So we don't have as much space. Um, it would be really great sometime if council would consider doing a housing site. Well, not even a housing, a lot, a lot survey of okay, all the lots that we have here. What what's on them? Um, and how many are you know? Uh, vacant or could be used for something else in the future. Um, some of these lots are incorporated into people's properties right now, but maybe they'll, another owner would, might want to sell it later, um, as well as um, uh, are they rentals versus homeowners living there? We always wonder that. Um, kind of get some information from the census every 10 years, but um, that would be really helpful. Some point. A lot of work, but wouldn't be hard. Uh, well, you'd have a yeah, you'd weeks. have someone that would come out and do that. My my daughter was did her in her uh, master's uh, what do you call it the end of capstone. Right after that, she was hired just to do a uh, and it was a, a land trust or something out of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. I forget what they're called, but they the city of Dayton hired them to do a vacant lot survey. Mm -hmm. So basically. They surveyed every single lot in Dayton, City of Dayton, and she did that over like a, did it, two big teams, like over four, and I, about four or five months. They had a couple of software glitches, but they actually had these iPads with the software that this Cleveland group had, and they would it roof everything from the condition of the roofs. Um, oh, geez. Yeah, everything, and, and that's, that's the awesome. City of Dayton now is really taking that and going with what they're going to do. They have a land bank, and they're going to try to. You know, that's at a much higher level. But I mean, it would be interesting. Prove 
you know, if, if there are houses that need work on them and people can't afford them, it's a good way to apply for funding. Right. Exactly. To try to break back the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and rehab. So, I mean, that was at a much different level, but it would be nice to just know. I mean, I try to just look at it from GIS, and there are a few. There's mm -hmm. not a lot, but there are a few. Um, that are actually still within the village, you know, yep. that could be developed. So. Was there was All right, well, you know, that. there is one thing. <coughs> it did get passed by council during the budget. I really forgot about it, but boards and commissions are now on one funding line. Uh, not, it used to be that only one particular commission got specific funding, and other folks could request it. And now there's a twenty-five thousand dollar line for boards and commissions in general. I mean, it would be I don't think out of line for this commission to say we would like to request uh, a lot survey. We, this is what we like as a body to help us, and they would request that funding. We'd like to undertake it. I don't think that's out of line at all. No, that's there's, nice. there's, there's some money there now. So that's great. Is that something you could ask council, please? Want to entertain that or you? Jerry and I, yeah. 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 Uh, it's just one of those things. It's like, yeah, we want to change this, but then uh, what, uh, I don't want to open up uh, like a Pandora's box. But, but I don't know. I mean, yeah. it, uh, we keep saying space is limited, but is it? I don't know right. completely. And, I don't really this, know this that answer. That would answer the question. Yeah. Because I think in here, I read somewhere with Ted. So do you have enough guidance from us as to what yep. to do? Yes, I think so. Awesome. Okay. And then, yes. You guys have anything to say about pocket neighborhood ordinance? Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, next item is new business. That's the comprehensive development plan. If you want to. I just, I just really, it's just a question. I've not never been through that process before. and. I'm um, just wanting to understand how you tackle that. Big. We hire a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> that would be <feel> nice. <laughs> well, Mark kind of did. Mark did a lot too. A yes. lot of it. He basically wrote it. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, I mean, were you, were you happy then with the result that, that this time it wouldn't maybe need as big of a between the zoning code update and then this, that it won't maybe need as much. When was it done? Well, are you talking about the comprehensive plan? Same document? The comprehensive development plan. Yeah. Is that what it's called? The comprehensive development plan. Yeah. No. It was uh, two thousand and ten it was adopted. Yeah. And you know, there was a lot. There was some visioning that the community did mm -hmm. and uh, that led into that, but a lot of those ideas were incorporated into that document. Um, I mean, that was like a two-year deal, if I recall. Is that something right? Mm -hmm. It does. But again, it hadn't been updated in 20 years. So it was really starting from scratch on this. Um, and it's supposed to be looked at in the five. That's what I So. Do we, do we all have copies of that? It's online and it's available online. No, no, as long as it's available online. Okay. So maybe, maybe we, we should. And, or, I think so. I mean, I think that at, at least at a minimum, I mean, I said this before, mm -hmm. the northwest corner of the village. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of changes going on there, a lot of stuff happening, and there's no real plan for how. Anyone sitting out there. And now we have a solar array in addition to the stormwater retention pond. The changes that we have university potentially. And, and we don't want to step on council's toes as they're doing a vision, aren't they? Are doing some sort of vision? Well, is that what they were talking about, though? Are they looking sort of? Maybe? Well, that's, well. but that's the political <laughs> football because. 
if you step right into the breach and say planning commission has undertaken your review of the comprehensive development plan and we are therefore to be actively involved in this visioning process because this is this is right on our plate I mean, that's certainly appropriate and an option the other option is to say holy cow we'll just wait until you guys have all that and then we'll decide what we think about what you've already talked about and perhaps envisioned um, two very different strategies and it might not be a bad idea to decide which way you want to fall before it starts really rolling. Hey, number two. Hmm? <laughs> Sounds like number two is less work. <laughs> well, I mean, and you don't want to be uh, uh, having the groups that are involved having to come to two different sure, things and sure. make sure that their voice is heard. I don't want to. I mean, it sounds like that's a council decision, though. I mean, really, I mean, we're due to review it. Yeah. And maybe that's how you bring it up, is that we're planning commission to review it. Um, council has talked about adding or doing some visioning in that part of the village. Do we, how do you want to proceed? How do you want planning commission to proceed? That's a good one. That's okay. All right, we'll throw that back on to council and see. Um, but, but in the second, you know, that's how things, we, we find ourselves 10 years before something, something should have been reviewed, five years, and five years, and we look, <coughs> now we're at seven. And council will push this into next year. And then we'll see, well, we, since the elections are coming up next year, maybe we should wait for the new council because three members will be out. Start the spring. So now, so now, <laughs> now you're into the next election, and then if you get three new members, then you're saying, well, those members got to get up to speed. <laughs> well, yeah. and, uh, and, 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 and the other pieces that, Planning Commission, I mean, the role that you have is a, a kind of a, a balance in a way to council, which has, a, by their nature, has something of a political agenda. If Planning Commission is able to step back and say, here are the documents before us, these are the areas in which growth can conceivably take place, and here is why. Here is the way that we, we envision that, and it doesn't have to be. Uh, highly specific, but right. at least it would provide council with, there are two other areas, is I'm completely making this up, there are two other areas of town which could be developed in this manner. They are this and this. Here are your options. If you choose this option, this is what this area will need before you can proceed with this kind of development. I mean, I think if council had that in or going into that visioning process, they've, they've got you know, some bumpers on that bowling lane. And right now, those, there are excellent suggestions in the current comprehensive plan, but that has been uh, kind of publicly dismissed by some folks as being out of date. It would be great if his body sort of stepped in and said, we're updating this. So it sounds like, Jerry, you're advocating for planning to. Yeah, it, it, given that we're not going to be in December, I know you the December is a holiday season. I say let's, let, let's, you know, since it's online, you know, let's take a look at it. Yeah. And then we'll we come look. back in January, at least we, we, we kind of look at it and say, you know, this is what we think we have to think. The other thing is we could be December if we're just having like a work session on the conference. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you know, we may find that 80% of it, 75 or 80% yeah, so of it, still exactly. part of it. Yeah, so and, you know, right. and then we can just come back to council and say, but these two yeah. places, yeah, these are, are two, like so Judy said, are so what, what we're paid, we should certainly be getting in December. Okay. Well, I'm already well that takes me up. I think that's all I need to see you keep an What's that? That's all I need to know right now for conference. Okay. Um, so, so, we so we'll put that on agenda planning? And you want us to look at it online? 
Why don't, I, so why don't I get that in a PDF and send that out to everyone? Oh, that'd be awesome. And maybe talk with Denise about <clears throat> just maybe some thought, thought points as you read through. Right. Just, just, just something really basic to, so that when you come together in January, you're not yeah. in drift. Yeah. 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 I say that, remember we thought, you know, when we worked at, uh, what was the The last election. What would the committee do? We have to look at uh, charter review. Yeah, oh. charter review. Yeah, yeah. We, we went in and thinking it was going to be this humongous effort, and it really was brought down to a couple of years. It wasn't really as bad as we thought. And I think when we get into this, it would be another good man. Well, because it's not a very specific document, right. it's, it's a very general, right. and this is kind of our goals, right. and, sort of, and, and, and we need to make sure that the zoning code and the regulations in the town mm -hmm. uh, incorporate these and are, and are yep. uh, move those goals forward. Because I, I, I really wonder sometimes is, you know, what we wrote back then and where we're heading now is it still just do you know from a visioning, I'm going to just yeah. say this because it's bogged me a little bit. The, the visioning process, the, it's, that vision that was done is, is still relatively new at six years of age. Yes. I mean, to say that it's like ancient times, it's really not because, you know, most vision plans are look for look 10, 15, 20 years out. I mean, all the things that are in that vision plan can never possibly be completed in six years. So I don't feel that that's See, but, you know, it's longer than six years. Yellow Springs is not the one. Right. <laughs> you probably yeah. So that, I, that, I think that, I'm on track with let's, yeah. just, let's do the general review right. of it, and then we can pull out those areas and let council know this is the areas that we feel need more concentration. Are you guys going to do some are we? Okay. So. So that. Antioch Dog Park. Antioch Dog Park, yeah. Um, so Antioch College is going to um, come before you in January, at the January meeting, to uh, propose a dog park uh, on um, East South College Street. How fun. So, Where? East North College. Uh, big, that big field. Okay. It's, open. it's a little, I mean, it's got a lot of nice trees. Where Day House was, I believe. I'm sorry. Where Day House was, you know, where that is, where it's, uh, it's a, it's been an open field though for a long time. It's not a field, I mean, it's just, it's like two lots together that. Across from West? I mean, uh, Whiteman's <coughs> on the other side. Yeah. East North College, you said. Mm -hmm. Sorry, okay. that's, that's the one that they have vacated.
Okay. And we have to have hold elections for chair oh, 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 January oh. also. We have a great chair right now that we also have. We also have someone who's very uh, experienced now in that role. And uh, I think she should maybe take over the chair. Do you do one? That's what happens when you, when you, when you do a one. Then. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. 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 Okay, with that, I guess we're done. Uh, do we have a motion to? Uh, I move we adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.